Recently, Big Bang's Daesung caused quite a stir when he chose 21 as a group that least contributed to YG's success. As you might remember, Daesung recently appeared on the Narak Quiz Show. At some point during the episode, the hosts listed four YG artists, Teddy, Jinusian, Blackpink, and 21, and asked Daesung to rank them from who had contributed most to the company to who had contributed the least. He responded by ranking Teddy first and 21 last, which made a lot of fans furious. Daesung was then asked about the members that the group could do without. After much consideration, he first chose Dara and then settled on Minzy. Seeing the backlash he got, a lot of his fans argued that he was probably joking since he and Dara have the kind of friendship where they tease each other a lot. Dara doesn't think so, though. On February 16th, Dara was featured in the Don't Do It corner of the Cult Woo show. While there was a lot to talk about, Daesung's words came up during the episode, leading Dara to give her honest opinion. She said that she was very upset at first, even though she knew the concept of the show, but she had run into Daesung at a shop and the two had made amends with each other because as as Dara put it, she had calmed down the second she saw his face. She added, Entertainment is entertainment, and we are close. Big Bang and 21 are like brothers and sisters. The actual contribution is that I think I built an elevator on my own in the past. I am proud that 21 built at least one floor by themselves. No matter what Dara said, though, netizens are still upset about what Daesung said in the first place. He has yet to address this situation, but based on the public's reactions, it might follow him for a while. In other news, and Hypen have just announced the U.S. dates of their world tour, and fans are outraged. Not at the tour itself, but at the ridiculous prices for the shows. The membership pre-sales happened on February 14th, while the general sales started a day later, which gave the fans a chance to see the prices of the tickets. The nosebleed tickets were $140, and VIP tickets went up to $700, excluding taxes. If this wasn't bad enough, fans noticed that the priciest ticket was for general admission, and even if you paid a ton of money, you would still need to camp out a bit to get a good spot. Then, it was discovered that the VIP tickets aren't the same as general admission, mission as they don't come with many perks. While you get to shop for merchandise without having to wait in lines to pay, enjoy soundcheck, and receive VIP merchandise, there's no send-off. While this might be nothing to some, fans who bought the tickets were thoroughly disappointed by the lack of perks, especially considering the price they're paying for those tickets. The high prices might be explained by the dynamic pricing practice, which HYBE has been applying to all their groups. If you're not familiar with dynamic pricing, it's a system that lets ticket sellers like Ticketmaster raise ticket prices based on how much people want them. Of course, HYBE is to be blamed entirely for this, and the only solution to this is boycotting, but to the public, it feels particularly evil that the company is taking advantage of the fans and raising their prices for no reason. Not only that, but if in HYBE and ticket prices are this high in their fourth year of their career, just how expensive are they going to be in the group's seventh year, for example? We can't even imagine how much the tickets to BTS reunion tour are going to cost if these are the prices right now. Before we get to all the shocking news, we've got another great deal for you. Keeping up with the constant influx of new K-dramas can be a challenging task, especially when episodes are released later in your region compared to Korea. Since integrating Surfshark VPN, today's video sponsor, into our routine, accessing fresh content has become effortless, liberating us from the constraints of regional release schedules. Surfshark VPN offers a solution to this problem by enabling users to swiftly change their IP addresses to virtually any location worldwide. For instance, Dr. Slump airs in South Korea earlier than in some parts of the world, therefore it's impossible to keep up with its episodes on time unless you want to watch them in low quality on some sketchy website. Utilizing Surfshark VPN allows you to switch your IP address to a Korean location, ensuring uninterrupted streaming of the latest episodes on Netflix. Besides ensuring timely access to your favorite dramas, Surfshark VPN provides an additional layer of security by encrypting all online activities between your device and the internet, which means that even when connected to public Wi-Fi networks, users can rest assured knowing that Surfshark VPN safeguards their identity and sensitive information from potential cyber threats. So secure your privacy and stream more with Surfshark VPN now. Enter coupon code KOOKIE for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash KOOKIE. Zero Base One's Jiwoong and his scandal has gotten so big that they involved forensics. As crazy as it sounds, we're talking about him being literally crucified for allegedly saying a curse word on call with a fan. On February 17th, Dispatch reported that they had obtained the voice analysis report from the Korea Forensic Service regarding the fan call. The analysis checked the pronunciation of words in the fan-uploaded video of the interaction between Jiwoong and the fan and CCTV footage from Wake One Entertainment, so they were very thorough. The report identified that there had been three phrases that had been said, thank you, the curse 
word and either the word strange or suspicious. However, differences in wave patterns between the phrases led to two conclusions. First, there was editing used to enhance the clarity of phrases two and three. Second, based on wave pattern differences, the curse word was spoken by someone different from the one who said thank you, which meant that Ji Wong didn't curse at anyone. Finally, since they couldn't see Ji Wong uttering the word on the CCTV camera, they had to rely on testimonies from staff members around him. One staff member who was present during the fan call informed dispatch that although they couldn't recall the call precisely, Ji Wong didn't use any curse words. Following the report, Wake One issued a statement saying that pitches and voice wave heights of the people saying thank you and the one cursing are different, indicating they are different individuals. Additionally, the video was recorded externally, not by the calling device, suggesting the curse may have come from an external source, which means that Ji Wong didn't say it. However, netizens aren't convinced and think that the company is just trying to fool the public. Some don't actually believe that any staff member could have said a curse word in front of the group at all. Others are criticizing the company for not apologizing to the fan, even though they just proved there's nothing to apologize for. But the fact that this situation has gone to this point is just insane, and all we can do is feel sorry for poor Ji Wong. Lucas has been slowly getting back into the scene, and we have a lot of reasons to believe that he's going to debut as a soloist anytime soon. Ever since both SM and Lucas have confirmed that he would be making his solo debut after he left both NCT and Way V, fans have been waiting for another update. In January of this year, Lucas was seen at Key's solo concert, sitting with Taemin, Minho, and Taeyeon. Even though he was wearing a mask and a hat which covered most of his face, it was easy to notice him waving and saying hi to fans in the audience. Key even gave him a shout out as soon as he found out he was attending, and Taemin and Taeyeon pointed at Lucas when his name came up. It was a sweet and heartwarming moment, proving that despite what some people thought, Lucas still had support both inside and outside the company. This can also be proven by the fact that Lucas was also seen at Ten's concert, along with other NCT members. On February 16th, Ten held the first show of his Asia Fan Con tour in Seoul. No one was surprised when Jaehyun, Johnny, and Mark were seen attending the show, seated all together in the balcony. Ten also posted pictures with all of them so he could thank them for being there. However, there was a fourth person sitting among the members, which some recognized to be Lucas. Sure, he was wearing a beanie and a mask, but it isn't that hard to recognize him. The person believed to be Lucas left the venue at the same time as the three NCT members, so there's more than enough proof to believe that he was there and they all attended the show together. Considering the members have stayed friends through thick and thin, it's not crazy to imagine they got together and went to Ten's show to cheer him on. Lastly, let's discuss Hyo Lin's controversy as she's recently come under fire for singing along to the N-word. On February 15th, Hyo Lin posted several Instagram stories to show the fans glimpses of her trip with her stylist. In one of the stories, Hyo Lin posted a video of herself dancing and singing to Doja Cat's hit song Say So. While she was rapping along to a verse, she was seen saying the N-word, shocking a lot of people. The video was quickly deleted, but the rest of the stories were kept. However, one thing about the internet is that nothing gets deleted. People recorded and uploaded her story on various social media websites, with the issue getting bigger and bigger by the minute. Most appeared disappointed, considering Hyo Lin's age and years of experience in the industry. They argued that she probably knew what she had done and that it was offensive. Netizens also flooded her comment section on Instagram, demanding an apology from her so Hyo Lin had to disable the comments on her most recent post and listen to their requests. Just a day after the whole thing blew up, Hyo Lin went on Twitter and posted her apology. She said sorry for saying the word and appeared heartbroken to have hurt her fans with her ignorance. She also thanked fans for holding her accountable and hoped that they would be there to see her grow not only as an artist but as a person as well. The reactions were very mixed, but she admitted to her mistake and it's up to fans to see if they are willing to accept her apology or not.